Welcome to Hoop Club Box 20. <clears throat> We're stitching a beautiful project by Charlotte Farmer. This is our project for the month. So Charlotte's a screen printer and um, so we've included quite a lot of colour and layers in this to kind of reflect the original artwork of um, the screen printing. I just love the colours on this, it's so cute. You might want to um, customise it and use your own. You might want to put a bit of green into the Kingfisher, um, yeah, or put multiple colours on the um, leaves at the back here. But um, we've included all of these colours for you and I'm just gonna go through the box and show you how to make it. So in our box this month, we have this gorgeous postcard of the original design. So I thought you might be interested to see that, but it's just a, a lovely little postcard for you to put on your wall or send on to someone. We have some water soluble paper. So with these free PDFs that we've been sending you, you can use this paper to draw on and then stitch your design on, which helps you transfer the design. And then we've got the fabric and everything that you need, the thread, the hoop, and yeah, everything's in here. So I'm gonna show you how to get started. So this is the booklet that contains everything you need to know for this project. And it's quite a thick one this, this month. We've sent, given you lots of detailed photos and instructions. And then a bit about Charlotte. I mean, look at all this colorful, gorgeous. Look at that. Oh my goodness, so nice. So we're going to go through the first steps of getting your fabric in the hoop. So you might want to just give your fabric a quick iron. You can sometimes stretch the, um, the creases out. But what you want to do is get the bigger hoop and place it centrally over your design and then you push it over the smaller hoop. So doing it on a flat surface is the best idea. And then you're just gradually tightening the screw and giving it a little tug, just a gentle tug, otherwise you will warp the design and it'll kind of go out of shape. So gentle tug and then tighten again until you've got um, the fabric as tight as you can in the hoop and it should be like a drum, so that can definitely go tighter. But you can just see that I'm <clears throat> gradually tightening the screw, which does get harder as it gets tighter, and then pulling the fabric. So we've got our fabric in our hoop and we're ready to start stitching. So we're using three strands to stitch the leaf shapes in stem stitch. So I'm just gonna split my thread so I've got three on each side and I'm just gently pulling so that the thread doesn't get tangled. And I've got three strands on each side um, to thread my needle with. So I forgot to put that in the book, I'm sorry. Three strands for the leaves using this kind of golden color. You leave a loop, you don't pull that through yet. What we're gonna do is our next stitch, and this is just on your first stitch, because after this you get into a different rhythm, is in the middle of that loop, you pull it up and then pull the loop. Now your next stitch is gonna be a norm more normal size stitch. But again, don't pull the loop tight and just don't pull that stitch tight. You leave a loop and then we are coming up at the end of our last stitch. So that's what's different. The first stitch, you haven't got a last stitch to come up at once you get going, you will have. So you come up there and then you're pulling the loop tight. And then again, you're going down a normal stitch length away. Leaving the loop to the left. Coming up at the end of your last stitch. Quite hard doing it with the camera in front of your face. That's why I'm a bit shaky. And then pulling up. So then you keep going just like that all the way up and down these orange leaves. Keep 
and a loop to the left and then up through that last stitch. Now this, oh, I just love this stitch. I kind of fell in love with it. Just the way it creates this little twisted effect is so nice. I just really love it. Um, so what I've been doing is holding the fab, holding the thread to the left on my way up and then I've been reversing it. So when I'm doing a, a length of stem stitch coming down, so reversing that, I've been holding it to the right. Now, I have no idea if this is what you're meant to do or not, but it felt like when I did that, I got more consistent kind of twists. So when I, when I held it to the left on the way down, it, I felt like I got a kind of slightly different looking twist. Now you might like that. You can just experiment with kind of holding it. But the thing is, is to be consistent in all of your kind of um, runs. So you're going up, always hold it to one side. If you're going down, always hold it to one side. That's the kind of um, rule of thumb. We have, so obviously this is printed with a color. And on my version, I've left lots of the color through because I think it gives you that almost like a 3D effect which um, I really like. You might want to just fill it all in. Um, I could definitely um, fill in these a little bit more but I think leaving a bit of the orange is really nice but that's up to you. You could fill it totally um, with stitches if you get carried away. So now we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to stitch the bird. So what we need to start off doing is stitching the outline in black so you can use a, a back stitch or you can use a split back stitch um, and then these little um, dashes on the bird's belly if you stitch those um, so that's just kind of like a little seed stitch just um, one kind of stitch basically um, yeah and I did all the back black so fill in the black to start with and then I'm going to show you how we kind of do this um, blending kind of effect kind of thread painting with the long and short stitch so we in your box you've got two kind of colors i've just used one here in the um in the sample but we've given you two a darker kind of red and then this neon so you should have enough if you wanted to just choose one you could just use one but um i think the idea really is that you blend them um so i'm going to show you i'm going to start with the dark red and show you how we start to blend. So I am going to start here, as I said, with the red. So I haven't outlined the bird, but that is, you really want to do that first is outline the bird and then we're going to be filling the colour in first. But I'm just going to show you the technique here without having done that. So I'm starting off with some random length stitches. So long and short, but really quite random along this bottom edge. And then I'm going to go back along, I'm going back along this way. And then I'm going to adding another layer of stitches. And so some might go kind of next to these stitches. Um, some might go and I might split the end of that last stitch with my next stitch. It just kind of depends where you are. You, it's, it's quite random because you're yeah. filling in a kind of a non um, straight like shape. So the, straight, the shape isn't kind of like a square. Um, so it's in its nature, it's quite random, um, but you're just going along doing these kind of little stitches. Um, in theory, the only ones that need to be kind of long and short are the starting line, because then a similar length stitch will, will keep giving you that kind of like jagged edge. But in reality, it is quite random. So just choose to do kind of um, a, um, a variation of kind of long and short stitches or... Um, whatever you need to do to kind of fill in this area um, with lines and lines of stitches. Um, finishing them next to the stitch or filling in, um, splitting the end of the last stitch. So I'm gonna just keep going and I will show you kind of how I get on just to demonstrate the technique. So I've used a length of thread, which was two strands to do this first line and now I've switched to one strand I'm going to do the next layer um, because it's much easier to blend with one strand. So obviously it's going to take longer and this is a labour of love, but kind of like if you take the next layer with one strand, then you can start to then with another one strand of thread of your next colour, start to blend these lines. And it's very satisfying. It's very 
fun to do. But again, I'm just kind of going along this line. I'm kind of um, adding in stitches that connect with my previous line. Sometimes it goes through the last stitch. Sometimes it doesn't, it will just fill in a, a kind of an empty space. Um, but hopefully you can get the kind of idea of the technique from this. I'm going to go down a previous stitch on that one. Going down the previous stitch does help to fill the space and get rid of all that blank space. You don't want to be able to see the fabric, but sometimes you can't always go down a previous stitch. So you just need to kind of slide your stitch in next to another one. Anyway, so that's the next stage going along with one strand of thread so i'm going to take that um use that one line of thread up and go probably there and back and then we'll start in with the next color so now you can see i've started going back along this line but with my next color and so i'm filling in gaps i'm almost like doing a kind of a vertical brick laying effect with my stitches um, it's worth noting that when you're stitching with one stitch, it's some, it's quite hard to split one strand of um, embroidery floss. It's not impossible, but sometimes you'll need to just take your um, top stitch into the end of that stitch, the last stitch, or just kind of slide it in next to uh, a previous one. And you kind of, it's a very um, organic kind of stitch. It's almost the opposite to a cross stitch because there's, there are kind of almost no rules as to where to put your next stitch, whereas cross stitch is so um, structured. Um, so it really is a case of just kind of building up and blending um, with your threads and just seeing how it goes. And you will get better at it and you'll kind of get more practiced. Um, and yeah, I think your technique will improve. But this is me just kind of going back over them with this one stitch. I'm going to um do another tutorial where we just keep looking at this kind of thread painting technique also the stem stitch and then these reeds that are stitched in a, a split back stitch and then we go over with some white and um, layering up our kind of stitches so yeah this should get you so far i'm gonna do some additional videos over the next couple of days